I've pretty much done no preparation for this whatsoever. But we're gonna try to do it anyway. I'm not using a microphone right now other than the one that's like internal on my camera. So hopefully audio works. I just didn't feel like um, putting together the whole external microphone situation at 7.30 in the morning. I did run out of coffee yesterday morning, so the only caffeine that I have in my house is black tea, which is fine, but is not going to have the effect I want it to have on my tired, sleepy girl body. Okay, so what I thought would be fun today is since I have read so many books this year um, and surpassed my goal of 20, I would like to go through my 10 favorites. I have my top 10 books of 2021 and yeah, I'm going to go through all of those. I broke them down by category so that it would be a little bit more cohesive and so I wouldn't have to rate them like number one, number two, whatever, because I'm not, I don't know if I could do that, truly. It would take me way too long to figure out which ones I liked the best of the best and which ones were like the worst of the best. No, that's not my vibes. I don't have all the books with me because I'm lending some out to people, so I think I have seven of them here. And I can't wait to show you all of them. It's gonna be so fun. Okay, so the first category I have is religion slash spirituality. That has been a big hot button topic in my book selections for the past two or three years. So this year was no different, as you can imagine. My two favorites are The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr, which I have right here, and The Christian Agnostic by Leslie D. Weatherhead. That one I'm pretty sure is written in like the 80s, but it's still so relevant, so relevant. Spirituality is something that I aggressively research because ever since I was literally born, it has been like a central part of the identity of people's lives. Um, so I have dedicated so much of my time and energy to learning what I actually believe and what beliefs I align with the best and the Universal Christ and the Christian Agnostic are two really good really insightful books that I feel like I'm moving closer to as far as beliefs go I'm still figuring stuff out but both of them seem to align with the gospel of Christ and um, that is what I find most important in Christianity. And so, yeah, they're doing the thing. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Even if you're not looking to adjust your belief system in any way, I would really encourage you to read both of these just as a shift in perspective and like a chance to open your mind to different things. <laughs> And it's not even like a different religion, it's still in integrated into Christianity, but it's like a different layer of it. So, highly recommend, please go read these books. They're incredible, so well written. The Universal Christ is pretty small, so it's not like you're gonna be sitting there reading it for years before you finish and figure it out. Um, the Christian Agnostic is a little bit denser, but still super worth it. Please read it. The next category I have is essays. And normally I don't read like essay type writing, um, but this one really caught my eye. It was the first book that I read this year. It's called Alone Together, Love, Grief, and Comfort in the Time of COVID-19. And it was edited by Jennifer Haupt. I probably butchered that last name. It's, I'm sorry, Jennifer, for not saying your name correctly. But it's a collection of all these different authors and artists. And they write essays, they write poetry, um, they 
put together conversations they had, like all kinds of things. They separate the all of the essays into the chapters of love, grief, and comfort. We just went through like lockdowns and long distance and isolation and all of these people went through it with us and this is a great way to find people to relate to in art um and it's a super easy read because it's not like one big plot across a novel it's like every few pages you're reading a different person's words which i think is really cool so definitely give that a look the next topic I have, the next category, is politics. And now, I used to not be a political person at all, and then this election came around and I was like, okay, gotta get into it, gotta, gotta do this thing. So I read, I've been reading quite a few books on politics and um, minorities and people that are discriminated against, just so I can like have credible opinions. I guess like I, I just want to know where my opinions are coming from you know because I know that human rights should be equal but sometimes you have conversations with people that are like yeah but in this case it's not important and you're like what <laughs> um, specifically I've been reading about like feminism and women's rights, especially when it comes to the medical field, um, pro-life, pro-choice, all those things. So I have two books in this topic. Um, one of them I don't have because it's being borrowed. The other one I do have. But the first one is Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. And this is by Caroline Perez. And then the one that I have with me is this one. How the Pro-Choice Movement Saved America, The War on, wait, help. How the Pro-Choice Women, How the Pro-Choice Movement Saved America, Freedom, Politics, and the War on Sex by Christina Page. Um, Invisible Women was written in 2019, and this one was, I think, in like 2006. Yeah, 2006. So this one's a little bit on the outdated side, but it is cool to read this and watch how some things have changed. Like some things have made positive change and some things have made negative change. But I would say it's still a very relevant read. You get to see a lot of different perspectives on the pro-choice movement and the pro-life pro movement. Highly recommend that. Invisible Women, I would say if I was gonna pick one of these books to recommend to you, that's the one because even though it is thicker and quite a lot to read, um, it covers so many topics. It covers the medical field, education, career, um, international women and how they live, politics. Like it, it shows how women are affected, even though they're not even a minority. Like women make up like 50% of the population, uh, right? I, I feel like that's right. I'll look that up and see if I can figure that out. But we're not a minority by any means. There are plenty of women in the world. We're just discriminated against because we're women. Um, so highly recommend that 10 out of 10, five stars. I would read it again, absolutely. Um, I'm making literally every woman on the planet borrow it and read it. You have to read it. The next topic is a little bit more lighthearted. Um, it's poetry, you know. My thing, my favorite thing. Uh, this book, Devotions by Mary Oliver. I absolutely adore Mary's writing. I think she is just such a joy. I wish I could have met her and like, had tea with her before she passed um, because just from reading her work you can tell that she has such she had such an appreciation for life and for the beauty and nature and the beauty in people and I just I just think we could learn so much from her and the way that she views things she has such childlike eyes um, and just sees the wonder of the world so easily. 
So, if you're gonna read a poetry book in the coming months, that's that's the one. The, the next category I have, we're getting into the fiction books now, it's horror books, and I try to read at least one a year. Um, that's a new thing I'm doing. This year I read Misery by Stephen King. Last year I read The Shining by Stephen King. So good. Love that book. Um, but this year, Misery. Also great book. Probably would say more like a four star book. Um, the plot didn't capture me quite as much as The Shining did, but it was still like so thrilling. And I had seen the movie before watching the book, so I knew kind of what was going to happen. Although, when writing a book, <laughs> I feel like you have the artistic liberty of being a lot more detailed when it comes to um, graphic scenarios. So there, there were a couple places in the book that I was like, I have to put this down for a second. There's so much happening, there's so much blood, and blood is not something that really bothers me too much, depending on the scenario, but that was like, whew, that was intense. So, um, massive trigger warning. It's not for the faint of heart, is what I'm trying to say. Great read, but use caution. Parental discretion advised. The next category I have is mystery, and, um, for the mystery book of this year, I read And Then There Were None. I had read And Then There Were None back in like sixth grade or something. I was in a book club and we read it, but I was like, for the sake of like nostalgia, I'm gonna reread it. And I did, and genuinely, probably one of the best mystery type books that I've read. And granted, I don't read many of them because it's just not my genre really. But this one is so good. Like, even though I knew what happens in the end, and this is kind of like a storyline that I feel like has been copied and pasted into different movies and books and things, um, it still keeps you guessing. And the characters are great. There's so much good backstory. Um, really well written. So if you're looking for a mystery book, that's the one. Give it a read. Then we have historical fiction. This is something that I never read. I don't like historical fiction. I didn't even know that this was technically historical fiction until I um, was getting ready to do this and I was putting them all in categories. But <sighs> where the crawdads sing, are you kidding? Are you kidding me right now? Delia Owens knows how to write a freaking book. She knows. She's got the tricks. She's got the tricks. That book made me feel so many things. So many things. Good grief. I think, I'm pretty sure I did cry in the book. I didn't cry in many books this year, but that is one that I did. Kaya's character is just so lovable and you feel everything she goes through so deeply and have so much empathy for her. And that's something that I think is really incredible that authors can capture is whenever you're like, I feel like I relate to this person even though I've never gone through this ever. Um, it's a story of family trauma and isolation and finding a place of belonging sprinkled with a little bit of romance, a little bit of mystery. It's just everything you could ever want in a book, truly. I could not recommend it more. It's probably one of the best books I read this year. And then we've got short stories. Another thing that I don't typically read, but this one caught my attention. Actually, one of my old roommates, Lydia, recommended this to me quite a while back, but I just never had the chance to find it and read it. It's The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Um, it's 15 pages, okay? 15 pages. And I, I think it's, it's based on a woman in like the 1800s or something who's going through postpartum depression, but they don't call it that because that was not a thing that was understood in the 1800s. And um, she and her husband moved to like a vacation home because they can tell that she is ill 
but they don't know why because physically she's fine. Um, they're not paying attention to mental illness at all. And then she ends up uh, kind of in isolation and she's got this yellow wallpaper in her room that's peeling off and there's patterns and she starts seeing things in the patterns and like kind of having a psychotic episode way ahead of its time. Um, I think you can find the story online for free, but if you're like me and you want to hold like a physical copy of the book, you can very easily find a physical copy online as well to buy. Um, there's so much symbolism and so many strong statements about political revolution for women. And th this is like based on the author's experience. Like she went through postpartum with her husband and was ignored by doctors and she, part of the reason why she wrote this book is to be like, screw you doctors, like this is a real thing. It's just incredible. Shout out to Charlotte, like she really, she really did it to him. She didn't have to, but she did. And those were my 10 books. Um, I would love to hear what you guys read this year because I'm starting to make my list for next year and what I'm going to read. And I gotta get some ideas. Gotta get some ideas. So if you want to leave some recommendations in the comments below, please, by all means, do that. And if you've read any of these books, I want to know what you thought. Did you like them? Did you hate them? What are your opinions? Thank you so much for watching. This was so fun. I love talking about books literally anytime. Give this video a like if you liked it. You know what to do in the comments. And subscribe if you want. That's it.